maybe we can just move close to the school. She goes, you can't afford to live near that school. <laughs> I said, what? I said, what does that even mean? What do you mean I can't afford to live near that school? She's like, I watch your podcast. She says, first of all, right away, I was like, what okay, so I'm an mean? idiot yeah. and, I'm, and I can't afford to buy anything. That's what she said. I watch your podcast. She goes, she goes no, I watch your podcast anything. and you're saying the market is down. Mm. She says, the market's down. She says, you can't afford to move and go to this, a more expensive neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I was like, so you base that off of me, off the podcast? Off the podcast. This it's is like, how your mom yeah. gets to know you. She that's has to my watch mom, the show. That's how my mom gets to figure out my financial situation. You don't call enough, like, TK. All right. I was like, watch your show. <laughs> Thanks for you're you're broke <laughs> i seen your show That's nobody right. would be doing that show if they actually had important things to do where the hell do we start because First of all, I feel like I was under a rock, at least for the last week, if not the last three. I yeah. feel like I don't even know what's going on in the world, but I do know what's going on in the world. And it's not pretty. Holy shit. Well, but let's just make a comment about our last video. Our last video. That thing was booming. That thing boomed. That, if, you, if you're watching this now and you didn't see last week's the one, there's the information one. in that video you're not going to get anywhere else. It's true. Unless and you go on Twitter. Then you'll you'd get have it. to watch. You'd have to go to many different places to get all that information all at the same time. Yeah, so or you go to the better assembly off just to watch our video on Twitter or yeah. that video. This is a, a ton of information because you know why, TK? Because nobody else gives a shit about it except for me. No, there's lots. Of people I'm fascinated with it. Yeah, but there's lots of people who care. But we got yeah. some good info on there. All right, all right, all right. Back, back on track. Back on back track. Back on track. So what's on track? Because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We've got interest rates that held with the Bank of Canada. That's pretty important. Mm, boring. We've got sales seem to be picking up in September, according to mm -hmm. some headlines. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? We can probably talk a little Realtors. bit more about the one. We got we've got places in Ontario. I mean, I heard before about. Italy giving away property to attract people, but we've got Cochrane, Ontario, giving away land for 10 bucks if you're willing to move to wherever the hell that is. Hey, uh, is it uh, just me or is it uh, getting uh, crazy here? Huh? Doesn't but exist. Not a real place. We got a lot of stuff. I, I had a crazy week, TK. We almost got the deal closed. It was super close. We got closed in escrow, though. Which is yeah, very normal. It's normal. And I, listen, I know I've never closed a deal on closing day ever, but yeah. I still Especially work really hard to get towards it. Right. Yeah, you had to. Oh, I don't think anybody would have done what you had to do in order to get that closed. And so everybody, no chance, let's just man. talk about that really quickly. Everybody knows, everybody thinks that they can put together a deal. Mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about assemblies. Let's just talk about any, any deal, type of, any type of deal where you know you're involved you, you you could be an investor you could be um somebody who's doing new construction you could be someone like yourself whatever the situation is you get to the point where you're able to actually get a buyer and a seller who are actually willing to agree on anything whatsoever right which is hard enough as it is right then you have to be able to figure out a way to be able to actually make sense of it all so that there's even you, yourself, or your partners, the bank, anybody else who's involved in this transaction even wants to remotely get involved with it whatsoever. And there's all sorts of work in between there. Mm -hmm. And you have to satisfy all these people's needs in order to be able to get it through to the finish line and closing, including the lawyers, including the insurance, including the mortgage, including the buyers, the sellers. Everybody's got their own sort of requirements. And one of those stages, people fail. It's just what happens. People fail. There's a ton of deals sure. that don't close um, on the commercial side, like residential, you're pretty much like a 99.9% .9 chance of closing. If you got a firm deal, those people figure out a way how to do it. When the market changes, it maybe goes to 99.8%, but otherwise everybody's closing. Commercial is not the same. You know, there's lots of reasons for a deal to not end up closing and there ended up being in a lawsuit or someone finding a way out of the deal. Like yeah. remember Vitaly's deal? He had that deal like wrapped up and it was yeah. like, oh my God. I, Until he I, didn't. Right. But it was like closing day, you know, and all yeah. of a sudden they're like, oh, that garage, it's, it's a little bit, 
a little bit yeah. on the other neighbor's uh, property there, you know? No, it's I like, can't get any of the money all of a sudden. Yeah. So uh, I don't really want it anymore. Yeah. See ya. Things happen. For sure. For yeah. sure. But like you, you touched on something there and this is the, so, you okay. So it is definitely a miracle to get two people willing to, you know, a buyer and a seller willing to work together, but that's not really the hardest part because that, you know, I, I can talk to a lot of people and get in a conversation about buying and selling a piece of land. What really fucks it up and you touched on it. You didn't mean to, but you mentioned it is the lawyers TK. And I've said this before, but as I'm going through this week and signing, digitally signing for the most part, document after document after document after document, which is, I can't even believe how many documents there were, but TK, I made a list, okay? Do you want to know how many lawyers it took just to get to a closed in escrow? Not even the full close yet. Mm. It, it's let's, absolutely let's it. ridiculous. No, but I, I'm not going to tell you how many you count. Okay. Ready? I'm going to tell you what each one did because this is nuts. Okay. We are so close to 6,000 subs. We need a little help though. Cause Guys. we're like, everybody tells us we're the most underrated show ever, but we just stay underrated. Yeah. Come on. Need more subs. Rate us a little bit higher. Jesus. Like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell. Hit the bell and check out the clips channel, TK. Please subscribe. And well, ready? I'm going to tell you what each one did because this is nuts. Okay. Okay. The developer's real estate lawyer for the transaction, okay? There's the vendor's real estate lawyer for the transaction. There's the vendor's mortgagor's lawyer for the transaction, okay? There's the LP's real estate lawyer. There's the LP's securities lawyer. There's the developer's securities lawyer. There's the agency, okay? These guys need a some kind of a contract lawyer just to represent them for some reason um on like a templated like agreement okay then there's the developer's municipal lawyer okay and then there's the the, the lp's municipal lawyer there's the city solicitor was involved okay he's a lawyer there is the first mortgagee's jores real estate lawyer and the second mortgagee's real estate lawyer how many was that, TK? 12. 12 lawyers, okay, to get in escrow. And yeah. TK, guess why we're only in escrow and we're not fully closed? Actually, because hold by on. the time one lawyer sends a message to the other lawyer, it's been right? like two and a half hours. Money has to go here to here to here to here to here to here, okay? And yeah. it doesn't happen instantly for some reason in 2023, almost 2024. For some reason, you don't send a wire and boom, it's there. Mm -hmm. You send a wire and you got to like wait for somebody to confirm it and then somebody else confirms that, okay? So, but not only are there 12 lawyers, okay, that I know about, they all have at least one junior working underneath them, helping them with some shit. Mm -hmm. So there's likely 24 plus lawyers with their fucking lawyer ideas coming up with all kinds of things for the miracle, the buyer and the seller to start thinking about and arguing about. Okay. Mm -hmm. All these scenarios that come up that it's like, the, well, what happens if you, uh, and uh, how come you didn't, uh, and uh, right? where's the, I know, I know. And it's like, and then it's like you sign the documents and somebody goes, well, you know, we thought about this. So, 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 but this is what we have to deal with. So, but now translate that into dollars, how much we had to spend on a bunch of lawyers just to get into escrow. Okay. And then translate that into another reason why we have a fucking housing crisis and the prices are crazy because that's just to get to closing TK. Then mm -hmm. there's the rest of this thing. Okay. Like mm -hmm. just imagine, and we you mentioned insurance. I mean, do you know how many people even have to get involved in the insurance aspect of this goddamn thing? So it's just so stupid, right? So you mm -hmm. got these two people that are like, yeah, let's do this, okay? And you got like 30 other people telling you all these reasons why you shouldn't, freaking your partners out because it's their responsibility to tell them, you know, what yeah. you're getting into. And it's like, Holy Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
now. But but it's so easy though. It's so easy. Yeah. Right? All you gotta do is just gotta find three houses that are all next to each other, and now you got a site. Boom. And you're gonna and you're gonna make a lot of money. So I mean, it's not exciting because it's not even technically closed. But on Monday, we'll be super excited. Yeah, and it's, we'll have a nice big expensive. party. But uh, anyways, good news. Tiff, what? Tiff did not strike a death blow to the economy, uh, he which didn't is have probably not good. Him. He didn't have a death blow in him. TK, the guy the, went. The death blow happened a year ago. He's already yeah. nailed us to the to the wall here, and I, and everything they're saying right now is now very like. Oh, there's not a lot of hope in the message that the Bank of Canada is given right now. You know, they're talking in what about. Regard? They're, well, they're talking about, you know, the geopolitical situation. They're talking about increases in fuel costs. And they're talking about inflation, uh, you know, not necessarily uh, forecasted to be going back down to 2% anytime soon. And that they must they're preparing be listening us, to the show finally. They're, pre- they're preparing us for interest rates uh, to be higher for a lot longer. And also the potential for interest rates to climb up further. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. There's no more like further. what happened to the old Tiff, you know? The old Tiff was great. He told us not to worry. Everything's going to be okay. Don't worry. Transitory. And it's all uh, good. Everything's fine. On the floor now it's forever. Just like death and destruction. He doesn't give us any good news ever. Well, right? I mean, he didn't raise rates. So that's good news, I guess, depending on your perspective. But I think we all agree that like the work is not done if they are trying to squash inflation. So if you want to squash inflation, you're going to have to take out these politicians because they seem to really be interested in producing a lot more money in order to throw it in the garbage, basically. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I forget so, the wording they, they used was, but the government policies are part of the problem. Right. Fi- the, fi- the, the monetary policy is working against Right. The the, yeah. the 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 bank of Canada's Canada's moves. So yeah. they raise and then they pump the money full of extra money for all kinds of bullshit. Yeah. Oh, you guys, you guys need help with those extra interest payments. That's good. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. The Bank of Canada has got a decision here, which is, you know, do we allow inflation to get out of hand or do we save a few people from bankruptcy? Mm. Right. Yeah. And like, you I know, think when it's going to be back, more than a few. No. Well, again, when you look back and you and you look at any history of any uh, economy in the world and you see these like major screw ups where they weren't willing to do what was necessary in order to protect the broader economy. Every single time you go, well, they only had the guts to be able to do what was right back in the 80s or the 70s or after this happened or that happened. This will be one of those moments if no, but if they, if they had only raised, because the truth is, if they had only raised rates sooner, way before. But this is the thing; right? it's always yeah. why don't we, we they learn? Missed that why don't they market? learn? Why don't they go like, okay, yeah. things are starting. Let's just raise rates now. And, and all the decisions, them. all the bad decisions out there. Look, there's a ton of people out there in different different predicaments, I, and I get it. But a lot of people are weathering the storm. A lot of the people right now are figuring out a way to make those payments or figuring out a way to sure. re-amortize or figuring out a way to get another job. There's a lot of solutions, a lot of creativity right now. The people who have no options are the very small group of people who bought between middle of 2021 and uh, beginning of 2022. Yeah, Those are the people who are who are in the worst situations because of the price they paid and the interest rates at that time, and that most of them were variable rates. That's a typical profile is there you were on a variable rate, but there are some people too who only had a one year term, two year term, whatever, for various reasons. And then now they're coming up for renewal and it's, you know, the 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 situation's not so great. It's right? horrible. TK, I got I, I, I asked for my renewal letter a while ago. Mm-hmm. And I mean, now that I see it, I understand why they took so long to send it to me. But I got it. Probably watch the See, show. But this is the, this is the part of the problem is it, if you use the same lending institution, then all you got to do is sign a piece of paper and your mortgage is renewed, right? And now you don't have to worry about your mortgage. But if you want to go and shop around and try and get a better rate, now you got to yeah. requalify with the new bank. 
And yeah. qualifying is like not easy right now, right? Especially as things are kind of going down. Not that they're hard, but like they're not as easy as they used to be. Actually, no, they're a lot harder than they used to be. Let's be realistic here. It's not easy to get people to let go of their money right now. And yeah. so anyways, TK, I get this thing and I'm like puking. OK, it's disgusting. I can't even believe it. And I knew that my payments were going to go up when I bought the house. Like that was part of the plan. Right. I knew it. But I didn't think that they would go up double. Right. And so the conversations right now are like, hmm. I could go rent a nicer house than mine. OK. For the same money as I'd pay on a mortgage, but I'd be able to have all that equity making me money if I got rid of this house and I started renting, right? I could live in a nicer house, wouldn't have to worry about interest rates, and I could have an asset that brought me in money with all the equity that I'd take out of the house, right? Mm. And so I'm sitting here trying to figure out how does that not make sense? Like, why do I want to pay so much for this thing that's currently going down in value, right? The price is going up. The amortization is getting longer. So, like, I'm paying down less now at a higher fucking monthly clip. It's like, if you weigh this with, like, just looking at the numbers, okay? And there's no attachment to the house, okay? Because I'm a heartless dick it makes no sense to me to not go rent the house and use that money to just bring in more money now mm -hmm. am i crazy tell me i'm crazy. you're not crazy for thinking okay. it but it's just it's such a hard thing i mean i thought the same thing everyone think you know oh, why don't i just do x y or z move into this house that house play the market we just don't know i mean there's not enough certainty you know back of your mind you go but what if next year is the year the year of like what? Something happens. It's better. Better? You know, I can make more money. Better? I can my my, my property value is gonna go up twenty percent. But you're all these different rate. things. But you're I'm stuck in a saying, shitty rate still. Maybe the rates go down. You have all these these doubts, right? So these are these are the things that people think about. And um, you know, at the end of the day, like it takes a lot of courage to do uh the moves that are necessary, both in the stock market and real estate market. You know, it's it's Sometimes Who's got the strongest to make stomach. a move? But sometimes you got to make a move that like, got to make a move that doesn't it. seem like or other people think is crazy. And like, I don't yeah. know, it's a lot of money that could be working for me instead of like maybe going down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then I would still have that money while I'm sitting there watching everybody else burn and come back in at a maybe a, 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 a get a nice deal or something like your, that. Your plan, Daryl? Yeah. is one and a half years too late <laughs> okay well but i had only bought it two years ago so well, like you should have got out in february 2022 that was the time to do like, what you're talking about yeah listen now i, I know now is, is much not less well i mean right? the 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 price will be much less did, is the did, real problem exactly did you see the um some people had like clickbait you know like osfi rule changes to um, have an exception for the for the stress test what's the exception the exception is people who are insured mortgages and people who are renewing with another insurance company with another lender and it's going to be insured again and apparently there's only like one lender who actually is doing this so you don't really have many options but you would avoid the stress test if that was the case You'd avoid the stress on a test. refinance of an insured mortgage. Yeah. And like, is your Look rate it. the same it's clickbait, as clickbait? All right. Oh, if anybody, clickbait. if anybody knows about clickbait, okay, look at our channels, look at our thumbnails. All right. Our, yeah. our thumbnail guy's a master baiter. I mean, a master Ab clickbaiter. He's absolutely the best, you know? Both. And so we know exactly how to be able to get people to click. It means nothing. The stress test is still there. Nothing's changed. The stress test is still there. See, but Nothing's this is changed. something that uh, is a barrier to entry. It's the and... stupidest thing in the world. When they were telling mm -hmm. us that they were doing us to protect us from, wait for it, 5.25% interest right. rates. Fucking Once asshole. Once we get there. Motherfuckers. You better be able to afford that mortgage you're getting, Mr. Frank Ford. Oh, my God. And now we're God. getting... 
six and a half percent. Like, guys, come on, we're paying it. Like, I'm such an idiot for listening to that motherfucker because I thought I timed it perfect. Stress test. Come back in at like four and a half percent and be super happy about it. Mm. Holy, I four and a half. What a that's so far away from what I got. I can't even believe it. But anyways, TK, the you know good news do? is. Hmm. Go ahead. What's the good news? Well, that they didn't raise rates further and they it's not going to be worse. You should sell to one of those guys because there's an article in the news today where give uh, a VTB, man, the lady, you know, when you get those, I'll buy your home for cash. Oh, yeah. Like handwritten notes. Yeah. Yeah. You should you should call them because you'll save money on commission and it'll be a fast closing where there's no home inspection or realtors involved. So oh, this poor good. lady, this poor lady. OK, so she gets the offer. She's desperate. She's in a a tough, tough position. I think her payments doubled or something like that too. Can't remember where she was. She was in one of those small towns, Ontario, not Cochrane, Ontario, because they're giving houses away for free there. But in her place, they're still charging. So she's got a townhouse. She gets the letter. She's a little bit desperate. She gets um, the guy to come in and he uh, gives her an offer for five seventy. dollars right? What was the asking price? She didn't have an asking price. He came oh. in and said, you can get it for five. You can sell it for five seven. So Pressures her into writing up uh, an offer, signing it on the spot. She signs it on the spot. A week later, he calls back and says, nope, 550. It's got to be 550, right? And of course, he's got an assignment clause and everything like that. She says, okay, no problem. Then the guy puts it on the MLS with his wife, the agent. Mm. So she lists the property, the lady who sold to the cash. Now she has to deal with showings. So there's like a dozen or two realtors coming through her house they clean up her house, take photos, sell the property for six ten or something like that. No way. So now she's out all this money and she's going, what the heck? Right. So obviously she's upset. The guy's like, look, you signed the contract. That's what it said. Too bad. So sad. But the girl smartly, she went and took the wife, the realtor, took uh, Rico yeah, because but... there was no disclosure that she had interest in the property. So she got a little fine and, and everything else too. Right? right. But did the fine cover the what? like? Was it more than the profit or less than the profit? It's never more than the commissions mm -hmm. or the or the profit in that case. It's never more. The, the fine is never enough to deter people from doing it. But like if you have somebody <laughs> telling you that they're going to buy your home cash, yeah, right? It's too good to be true. Sure. It's Especially just what it is. if they wrote I, you a handwritten letter. When I, Whenever I go to uh, estate sales or people, if they're going into a home or anything like that, I warn them about their neighbors. Okay. Huh? So as soon as I go there and I, you know, do the evaluation or whatever, and I'll, I'll say, um, look, what's going to happen is more than likely only when the market's good. Like I'd say right now it's happening much less, but you never know. Um, one of your neighbors is going to tell you that they want to buy the house. They're going to say that their son or their daughter or their brother or something like that wants to move into the neighborhood. They yeah. think it's a great neighborhood and they want to buy the house from you. Top dollar, top and dollar. And I said, the only reason I tell them, I warned them. I said, look, the only reason that they're, talking to you is because they know that they might be able to get a deal because they want to take advantage of an older person who just passed or is going to a home, mm -hmm, you know? And, mm -hmm. and I said, just understand that they will still be interested if they're a real buyer, we'll market the property, we'll get everybody in. And that if they want to still buy the property, we'll still be able to sell to them and we'll get them to pay more money now because they're in competition with other buyers. You won't right. lose them as a buyer. Don't think like they're going to go away. They live across the street. Like they're not going Yeah, away. if they're really interested. But if they're serious, right? But yeah. just understand that their goal is not to pay you the most amount of money. Their goal is to get your house for a deal, right? Sure. And so many times people have come to me and said, yeah, 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 yeah. We were out cleaning out the stuff and, da, da, da. and the neighbor came up and asked us and you just said, hey, how are you? What are you guys going to do with the house? Yeah. You know? And it's just like, that's the, that's how it goes. Sure. So those cash buyers, you put out enough flyers, you put out enough, eventually some lady who's desperate, who's stuck, who's you know motivated to sell, thinks it's an easy, quick way, doesn't really know the market that well. Yeah. Ends up selling her home for essentially sixty thousand dollars less than she could. I know there's real estate fees and all that, but I mean for that price point, you know she probably lost twenty grand, maybe whatever it was, twenty five. Who knows how well the agent did either, right? Yeah, but still, it's I can't believe that they would like do that. I can't believe 
put it on the MLS a, after? Yeah, and that you get to keep your license after doing stuff like that, and that the fine isn't so extravagant that it deters you from doing. It's it. all legal though. It's all like it's, it's unethical. not fucking legal. That's why she's getting it's, a fine because it's well, illegal. no, she should have just disclosed that she had interest in the property. That's all she had to do is disclose she had interest. So is it legal to not disclose? No, she ha you have to disclose. Illegal. So why well, the fuck is she not in the jail? Rules. It's against uh, the, rules. the rules. What's illegal mean? Yeah. I don't know. So it's somebody should sue this business bitch. Brokers yeah. so she got fined her. through Rico. Well, maybe that lady can sue her. I don't what the know. fuck is she doing out there? How many but times has she done this before and not get she signed the contract? These guys are out there doing it fuck a hundred times probably. I'm just saying. There's some evil people out there. People need to watch out. These are the... These are the abusing Time's their licenses in. what a horrible planet we live on tk you don't know who to trust anymore you don't know what to believe you don't know who to trust tiff obviously is a motherfucker you can't trust this guy for anything next thing you know they're gonna be lowering rates all the way back down to zero again because aliens are attacking like pluto or something and we have to fund it for some reason no no comment no comment so no comment but no, rates aren't going back down. You know, you know where we're at. We know where the Bank of Canada is right now. They're well, at the if point you where say they're not they've for realized sure. they've realized that they made a mistake over the last 20 years. They realized that what they did was not the best way to um stimulate the economy. Mm. And that the you know, lowering rates and, and using the interest rate as a blunt tool to to uh stimulate or cool down the economy, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. What works, TK? Anything? Some, Does some, anything some, work? Some sometimes uh, it's just about letting the market uh, be free and allowing it to be able to sort itself out. Is that happening somewhere that you know about? I think in theory, it's what needs to happen in most cases. Oh, needs I mean, at the to end happen. of the day, yeah, okay. at the end of the day, look, when people wanted to buy real estate, like I know the answer. To there's you. no, there's no, there's no stopping people when they want to buy. When real estate is going up and everybody's winning and everybody's making money. They don't, these interest rates wouldn't have mattered right now. If, if, prices, if prices were going up, we're sure. still on that same trajectory. They yeah. were on a 20% year over year return. Sure. Those interest rates would not have made a dent in the market. No. Everybody would have been stressed. They would have been killing themselves. It would have been crazy, but they would have said, I'm rich, baby. I'm rich. I'll refinance Got next year. A piece I'll of refinance real estate. the year after that too. <laughs> you know, that's what it would have been. Hmm. Right. 80 year amortizations, all sorts of crazy Whatever stuff. Whatever you need. But the problem was, is now because when when um, property values are coming down, you don't have that same ability. You can't go to a private. Think about how many people would have gone to a private lender and how many private lenders would have been like, yeah, sure, I'll give you a 90% loan to value at 10% or 12% or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, plus 6% fees. Yeah, right? right? You would have had a solution to get out each yeah. and every time because the real estate market's going up, right? So- does our interest rates the only factor? No, there's other factors involved. There are other right? factors. Involved. Right now, the rental market. Look, I heard a few stories anecdotally about where you know the rental market is and stuff like that too. But I'm also hearing from a lot of landlords that they're not having that easy of a time to rent out their properties anymore. Really? Yeah, TK. it's not the same everywhere. Toronto, okay, maybe. A where bit are they having or, trouble? Where are they having places? Trouble, right? You know, London, Kitchener. Other places that are like, you know, definitely got uh, a lot of rental stock who definitely felt a lot of upswing in the rental market over the last few years are now starting to see things oh. quiet down a little bit. Okay. So the outskirts where they were completely fucking ripping people off are having a tough time getting the same prices as they used to, but I'm sure they still have demand for space, right? There's still people that want to rent. Just there, the numbers are out of whack. Like, remember when we had Jordan on? He was talking about the rental price ver here in Toronto versus Hamilton versus the purchase price in both places. Like, but this is what happened everywhere. Is like the the rental market all of a sudden in wherever the fuckville ended up the same or like 10, 15 percent less than downtown Toronto. Right. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, every condo was eleven hundred bucks a square foot or more in Ontario. Like it didn't matter where the hell you were in the province. So all the pricing has to get like resorted out. If these rates are going to stay anywhere close to this for any amount of time. What I, kind of pricing? You mean all pricing, pricing all pricing of everything? Well, mm -hmm. I, listen, 
at the end of the day, the developers have to make a certain amount of profit. So if the pricing comes down, that means costs have to come down, right? And the cost of the money is not going to come down. That means the cost of the labor and the material has to come down or things just won't happen, right? So somehow somebody has to figure out how to get those profit margins. Why didn't you say land? But it is land. That's prices. I know, but you said the cost of uh, labor or material. Why can't the land price go down? That's the first thing I said is it's either the land, like the the price. Isn't that the first thing I said? Okay, go ahead. Carry on. Well, well it has okay. to be that or interest rates or labor or material yeah. or all of the above, right? Yeah. But I'm saying like in if we're saying interest rates aren't going to go down, then okay, that's off the list, right? And prices are kind of sticky at the moment. So what goes down? Nothing. Like what goes down? Something has to go people's, down. People's, uh, people's make- lives, like a sinking ship. So one of the issues that I'm facing right now, just talking to people, there there are people who are stressed, okay? There are people who have got a lot of pressure on them from interest rates. But then when you go over what their home is worth, they all of a sudden are like, mm, maybe things aren't so bad, you know? When they see how much equity they have in their house? When they see how much lower their house will sell for today than it than they thought. I've been so dealing with this a lot lately. Is it smarter so, to 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 here's def- my defend against it going down way further and staying there for a while or um hang on tight in case prices go back like crazy again? If you're 35 years old, hang on tight. Absolutely. 99 hang on times tight. out of 100. You yeah. Know, make it make it work. But if you're 65 and you're thinking about retiring, this could be many, many years. So now you're losing, you're losing like part of your retirement fund if you if you if you guess wrong. Yeah. And two, you're wasting years of your life, which is way more important than money. And so if somebody's thinking about you know retiring and going to you know travel or spend time with their grandkids or you know move out, you know they want to move to Calgary because that's where their daughter lives. Whatever, you're going to avoid that because you want to make an extra hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars on your home that you just made like. A, a freaking five X factor on the on the on the property that you bought with no intention of using it for retirement because you already have a pension and investments and everything else. It makes no sense. That's just greed, right? So the the issue that I'm coming across a lot is is yeah, sure, if people want as much equity they can from their home, it's a big part of their retirement. It's all those type of things, but they're not willing to sell for the price that the market's telling them because we're looking at the numbers and they're going yeah 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 okay okay well I want X and it's like well. Why don't you want X plus five hundred thousand dollars? If it's based on what you want, you should want more, <laughs> right? It's just it's not based on what you want. It's based off of what your neighbor sold for. I want the last one sold for is. And so, back in the nineties, who is the largest part of the population? What what was always the largest group of uh, generation? The baby boomers. Oh, that okay. Was a the baby boomers formulated question. I know. So the baby boomers. In the 80s, we're all starting to buy properties, mm-hmm. right? They're levering up. You know how many guys I've heard stories from where they're like, I owned 15 houses back in 87, lost it all. <laughs> like I've heard that story so many times. More times than I've heard, I bought 15 houses in the 80s and I still own them. Let me, let me promise you that. Right. So at that time, they're all young guys. They're all levering up. Right now, the millennials are all leveraged to the gills, right? They're the ones who are finishing. How many millennials do you know own three, four properties paid off, no mortgage in Toronto. Zero. That's the answer. Zero. You don't know any. Okay. I don't know. So any. I know like a, a few guys who own their properties outright, like they're principal residents, but if they're investors and they own rental, they're levering up and they're buying other rentals. Right. So when you're looking at um, a generational gap, you got all those levered young baby boomers back in the eighties and nineties who own a ton of real estate because they were all buying. There was a new wave of buyers coming in with the largest generation known to man. Okay. So when the market changed, they were all under the same pressure, like our today millennials are, or our today, like last two year buyers are mm-hmm. right. Because mm-hmm. they can't weather the storm. The price has gone down. They're over leveraged. The maybe interest rates are, could be a factor, but in back in the nineties, maybe they lost their job. So they couldn't hang on anymore. So we saw this massive amount of listings come up, power of sales, market dropped. It really crashed hard. But now the majority of the people who own houses are the baby boomers still. They don't have mortgages. Majority of the clients I'm meeting today are baby boomers. They don't have a mortgage, I promise you. 
Sure. But that was a tax but, law issue that changed back then that there was fucked a, up there was the a, whole market. There was a lot of stuff. There was a huge was economic very downturn. Different there was a now. recession. There was jobs. Everything was there. But, but the this, bottom line is the people who own the houses to put the inventory on. That's why we have such little sales right now. That's why prices have found a floor where they aren't really going down that much. But the economy is still grooving. The like, economy is still grooving, but the people who own the majority of real estate don't need to sell. But was it in the back in the 80s, early 90s when things went to hell? I don't think the economy was booming when things in the were 80s going it to was hell. and then it hit a, it hit a it hit a wall in the, in uh 89 90 that's what yeah happened. it just went to hell everything went to hell but right now things are going to hell for some people and other people are booming like motherfuckers yeah. right and like i remember back in 2008 2009 things dove off a cliff and then next thing you knew prices were fucking higher than they were before they dropped and it was like in a year, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I don't and that's know how people's memories. That's why people's memories are mistaken. Well, two thousand and one, it like went away for a bit, came back. Two thousand seventeen, yeah. it went away for they a forget. bit, came back. Yeah. But what what's now? Now it went away for a bit, not coming back. It went away for a bit, staying for a while. Like this, there's no all like, this right now. There's no end on? to this, Daryl. There's no it, end to this right now. We're we're like no happy it, ending coming around the corner. Is uh is uh the Ukraine war finished? Are we done with that? I we're haven't heard talking about, about it. that for a while. <laughs> but that thing done. disappeared with the aliens. It's not done. It's still very much a real thing. It's a it's big still deal. a real thing. So that's yeah. gonna cost some money. Now uh, I don't know if you've seen like the uh, uh, Gaza war. I don't even know what you call this. I thing. stay out of it. It doesn't I seem to be it. about Israel or Palestine anymore. It seems to be about much bigger things. So I have a feeling because of all the different characters involved in that, that that thing's going to have a little bit of a price tag on. Okay. And so you got like the whole world just like throwing bills around. Like it doesn't mean anything. Right. Like how can we keep interest rates high and the markets and the economies grooving and Bitcoin going to the moon and people losing their houses and waiting in lines for jobs all at the same time. Like, how does this make any sense? Why, why, why does it have to be like this? If people need jobs, we should make jobs for them. If people want to buy houses, we should give them houses. Nobody wants to pay fucking interest rates this high. There's no reason for it. I keep saying it. I've been saying it since day one of the show. Just fucking fix interest rates 3% for everybody, for everything. And that's it. What do we need all this stupid shit for? It does nothing. Look, it doesn't control anything. They don't have mm -hmm. nothing in control. They don't know. They're not doing anything. You just said interest rates don't even fucking work. They're blunt tool. The only tool they have doesn't work, right? And now it's all fraud and bullshit. Bank of Canada, Federal Reserve, they just make up money out of thin air, buy bonds from the government. Like, why does it have to be like this? Why do people have to lose their houses to fix the economy? Why do people have to lose their livelihoods to fix the economy? That doesn't make sense on any level. Like, from a human perspective, does it? It's not even a numbers thing. Like, how does it not? It's not about people losing. It's about people not competing for the same thing. So when we're all competing for the same house, when we all want to go eat dinner at that same restaurant, when we all want to buy that same car, I just looked at the prices of uh, Rolexes. I was just like, all right, when's the time to buy a Rolex? It wasn't a year ago. I can tell you that much because I was looking at the chart and it went through the roofs, right? For like a Submariner. And I was just like, what the hell is going on? Like, how is it that people were willing to spend that much more money on the same watch, you know, where there was no foreseeable, you know, increase in, in, in price. Obviously there wasn't enough available. So the, the price went up. I don't even and understand because why demand people is, want a watch. I'm just telling you, Yeah, this is just one metric, right? Then when all of a sudden the demand decreases, the same materials, the same process, the same watch is getting made. And yet the price has dropped by like 10 grand. Right. Yeah. So, this, so it's cars. A, that's just an example of, of, of how inflation is. And so we can't have everybody there. So it's not that they want everyone to fail. They don't want everyone to, to, to go broke and to be bankrupt. They just want them to spend money on less goods.
because everybody right now is yeah on the stuff that brings the money into their bank accounts well that's income right that's what they no. income is what they want the more income you make the more taxes you make no it's the interest you don't get to make more income it's the more interest payments you have to pay more more taxes you have to pay they get paid by interest and taxes from somewhere else right it's okay. all just a fucking that's where income income tax the more income you make no. they keep you in business they keep the economy going they collect more taxes that's how the, the government works it's the government's right. business 101 so but the, the, no the government's here to protect the people and to work in their best interest to not keep fucking them working destroy so they pay taxes. them so that the immigrant can come in and pay the six percent and be fine with your house right this is not what they're here the immigrants for. aren't buying houses no, who the hell is buying houses these days? I don't understand. Why are you buying Not a house? Many. Not very many, Not many, but they're saying Much sales less are up before. for the first time in three months. Who said that? I just, I got it right here, man. You mean they went up from... You can't bottle up demand forever. GTA home sales back on the rise after three months lows. Yeah, let's wait till those October numbers come out. Maybe they've risen from September, like the worst month ever. But October's going to be good? Yeah, well, Bad? compared to September, but compared to last October or any other October, it's a ghost town. Ghost town. A ghost, ghost town. town. Yeah. Well, TK. When, when I when I brought I sold a buyer a property this week and uh they um it was like when I was talking to the agent, it was just like you you got an you got an offer for me? You're you're like you're going to put it in you writing serious? and you're you're like you're going to actually like it's going to be signed and you're going to send it to me. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I know. I said, this is like a miracle. <laughs> really? I swear the conversation with the agent, but she's like, oh, she was like, it's, that's so lovely. Like, that's so it was just great. Like they I were get so to eat thankful next month. Yeah. There was a bunch of houses on the market. And so like, you know, obviously we got it for a good deal, but at the same time, like, you know, there's other houses that we could have picked and that we picked their house. Right. And so, um, she was just so happy that that was, that, that was, the house that they were picking. Uh, right. I'm so glad you think you could take advantage of us the most. This yeah, is so fantastic. And then I got an offer from a guy. I got two offers from a guy yeah. for two different properties and they were like garbage. I was like, what's going on here, man? What are you trying to do to me? Hmm. You know, where, what, what planet does this number exist at? So anyways, I'm working on that this weekend. So, so, but if we think back in history, not too long ago, when the Bank of Canada first decided to pause we saw everybody lose their fucking minds in real estate and go crazy. I, mm -hmm. And based on our conversation today, I'm getting the sense that that is not the case this time, that we don't have this kind of frenzy where people are like, well, you know what? Maybe they're at the end of the, the, the raising cycle. Nobody thinks that, right? Nobody believes they're at the end of the raising cycle. Or how come people aren't like active again? Because the, this is the floor, baby. They're not raising anymore. Are they not raising anymore? Well, that's what I'm saying. They're definitely but, fucking raising again. Like, right, like nobody well, believes that they're where not that information from, right? No, so they have to raise again. No. I mean, have to have as to. of right now. No. Let's see how these renewals but go if, till the next if, one. If if something else comes into the mix, if all of a sudden now we have a new factor, right? Yeah. When's where if the inflation next starts going back up again, right? If we start to see the war get out of hand, if we start to see uh you know immigration to see it get out of hand this thing decrease. is way out of hand this yeah. war in israel is or palestine is absolutely insane yeah and it's now it's iraq and syria and lebanon egypt did i say egypt already everybody's getting involved in this thing this is uh world war three man this is for real this is not a joke this is definitely like there's enough people involved in this one i don't think this world war like how the the war was before, like in World War One, World War Two, where you had to send a bunch of guys to the beach, and you know everyone had to go there with their guns on and be like, "Yeah, we got to try to take over that area." You are so, so much, out of touch, bro. So, there are so many troops on the way there right now, or there already for U.S. troops. Yes, already on a ship. there. Yeah, on a ship that has eight billion planes on it that can be there in and, one second exactly that's what i was about to say that you didn't let me finish oh sorry. they're not they're not getting off that ship okay not getting <laughs> off the ship the troops but the planes will oh the, the drones will. will yeah Th those are that's how they're fighting their wars right? they're attacking u.s bases like in lebanon and syria and stuff and the u.s is like um i don't think so you're not gonna do that and israel is like okay guys 
we've had a fucking enough. Like we are done with this shit. We're not listening to anybody. We are just nuking this place. We are mm-hmm. done listening to anybody. We're done letting our women and children get raped and kidnapped and used as pawns in war. We're done. And then you got the rest of the world going from the river to the sea. Palestine yeah. must be everybody's free. Every, everybody's got their their own opinions, but let's, everybody's let's stick to our bananas. Let's stick to our wrong our wrong uh, real estate opinions. But wrong real estate opinions. Well, don't yeah. you think that this all has to impact real estate here it does. in it Toronto does. and it Canada does. in a great, it, it impacts, great way? It impacts the 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 global markets, and it definitely impacts inflation. Hundred percent. Did you see what happened in uh, Acapulco? Tell me. You didn't see what happened in Acapulco? Listen, man, sorry, I thought my... you were staying on top of me these days. TK. Go ahead. Tell me. Acap- me. Acapulco got destroyed by the craziest storm that has ever hit land in the world. Ever. Yeah. yeah. Destroyed. Acapulco's like gone. I'm not even kidding. Like destroyed. If you, you got to watch these videos. I can't even believe the destruction over there. It's insane. And so that's what we talked about last time. Like, there's no more stuff coming online and a lot of the old stuff's getting flooded out and burned to the ground and disintegrated and tornadoed to death and just and and like India and Malaysia like they're floods that are taking out whole towns and villages like the housing supply is getting decimated and slowing down at a pace that is like irrecoverable from if that's English could be better than my english sometimes so 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 i'm at this uh investor so is that bullish event. is that bullish yeah so listen okay. to this so i'm at this investor event and this guy that i've done a lot of deals with in the past comes up to me yeah and he goes keep doing this for another few years in this city and you're gonna be a billionaire yeah because like as pessimistic as everybody is right now if you look a couple of years out into the distance and maybe not even that far it doesn't t- i don't care what anybody says that there's fucking inventory piling up that it, the minute that everybody is like in a frenzy again which will always happen here i don't care when it happens eventually it's going to happen again things will stabilize people will go nuts and they need a place to stay And they're not slowing down with immigration. So the city, the country, the province, they all need developers. They all need people to develop properties because it's getting worse, not getting better right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so you can, I I can't see the scenario where prices go down. I'm sorry. Like I just don't, I I can't, even if they go down for a bit, like we see, it's just always ends up going up. And I know people are going to like say I'm an idiot for saying that, but like, even if they stay down for five years, six years, eight years, which I don't know what's holding them down. 6%, 5% interest rates are not holding the Canadian real estate market down for a decade again. This is not the same. Is it? Am I crazy? Everybody makes fun of you for saying like this time is different. I just think that um, right now there's a lot of bad debt. And so part of me, to be honest with you, um, you know, I I just want, I want people to like learn a lesson from this and to be able to come out with less stress. I don't want people to be paying off a mortgage at 40%. uh, What's the lesson though? A 40% debt service ratio. So 40% of their gross income is going towards their debt payments for the next 25 years. I don't right. think that that's a good life. Right. But what's the lesson? Because, well, like- I think that you you shouldn't, if you, if you can't borrow um, a reasonable amount of money that you can pay it off, that you can get it paid off within a reasonable amount of time. Like I know we signed 25, 30 year mortgages, whatever, but like if you can't pay off your mortgage within maybe like 10 or 15 years, maybe you shouldn't get it. But, but you have the world telling you to go own a house and you've got commercials well, no, on TV. Just, saying... It's just your aunt and uncle in Canada telling you that. But, but if you if you did find a way to be able to, you know, 
buy a home, then you know you buy a modest one. Maybe you have rental income. You know, maybe modest you buy a triplex home. and you and you live in one of the units. But have you, you seen the Kardashians th homes? Look, like you gotta... I'm going into homes. I'm going into homes the that are massive, that are filled with one or two people. Like. The houses that I go so into crazy, sometimes, right? it's like thousands. Like the, 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 the I'll give you the this week, just this week, this is this week, forty three hundred square foot house, one person in it because it's a divorce and the husband's left and just the wife is there. Thirty four hundred so square foot house, um, two people in it. Okay, husband and wife. Um, uh, sixty five hundred square foot house, three people in it. How many people is the right amount for that size house? More than three. I don't know. People shouldn't even have that big of a house. If you so only got three big. People. It's crazy. Those are just like what I can remember, but there was a couple other ones too. They're huge houses that people are underutilizing. I've been talking about this for a long time. And so my big thing is this. My big thing is the baby boomers own a lot of real estate. Okay. They own the most amount of real estate. It's underutilized real estate. Okay. When they are going to need to sell those houses, when they get to the point where it's no longer feasible for them to take care of the home anymore they need their equity to be able to go to do other things wherever the market is they're going to sell and there's going to be a ton of them all doing it at the same time and then everyone who's going to be young the millennials because by 2029 millennials will take over as the biggest generation that's what the projections are they're all going to look around and they're going to go four thousand square feet what the heck do i need four thousand square feet for that's huge and it's going to be an inconvenience they're going to say that's that's not something that i should be getting involved with. I just, I just paid off my mortgage or I just, I didn't take a mortgage because my friend got screwed from 2021 or I've been saving this money because I didn't want to get into the market with only 20% down. I wanted to come in like really smart, fiscally responsible uh, behaviors. They're going to look at that 4,000 square feet house and they're going to say, I'm not going to leverage myself to have giant hallways and, you know, three extra bathrooms that I don't use. It doesn't make sense. And those houses will become less, will become obsolete. I know that seems Obsolete, wild. Like as building new ones or I, people are going to start turning those into fourplexes. People will turn them into fourplexes. Less people will want to buy them. It'll be, it'll be uh, properties that will be less uh, in demand. Than I they think are. you're completely out to lunch, man. That's okay. That's I fine. think we can, we can, the, the, it's the just an idea. Might... I'm not glued to it, but no, I'm but just I... letting you know that that is, that is what I see by, by the, the census of how many people are actually in these large houses. There's very little. There's too many of them for them to make any sense. And so when the time comes, and sorry, maybe I should rephrase what I said. The amount of people who will want to go into it and use the home the same way it was built will mm. be next to zero. That's a better way of wording it. That so is a different A story. family of yeah. four saying, I want to go and live in a 4,000 square foot house so my kids can all grow up in this big house. Those people will become less and less and less and less because of affordability and because of lifestyle requirements. But the uh, amount of people who will say, okay, if I move into that house, I need to move in with my brother, my sister, my uncle, my cousin. I'm going to do a rental property, whatever it is. They're going to change the, the use of that property. So our number of people per household is going to increase. That's mm -hmm. what it's going to lead to. So the housing supply issue that makes becomes sense. less of a disparity right now between supply and demand because we're going to cram more people into houses over the next 20 years. Well, and it's going to be not only because people don't want the space, it's going to be a, a function of people wanting to keep their house and renting out portions of it so that they can keep it is going to spur that on also. People are going to be and like, it will be the what? prices too because prices eventually will be going back up, which is maybe why what you were first talking about. Right. Yeah. So let's talk about quickly before we end this Cochrane thing, because Cochrane, in Alberta. case anybody miss, uh, misheard what I said there, Cochrane, Ontario is offering land, not a house, TK, land. I'm, I'm going to Google it. I don't think it's a real place. Yeah, I have it right here. It's I know, near but Timmins. I, I think it's... it's near Timmins. Northern Ontario town considers selling land for $10 to boost housing. Considers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but this guy's place. talking, the mayor, Peter Politis, yeah. who is also, I guess it's not the same guy, but he's got the same name as the, the, the head honcho or the owner of uh, Graybrook. Uh, but he's saying that they're ready to sell land to people uh, for 10 bucks. They, uh, I'm sure it's like awesome land. I'm sure it's not great land, but they want to spur on, you know, people but want why, to What's the houses. terms, though, when you buy that land? The terms are probably that... Uh, you need to build a house. 
you have to build a house and you got to stay yeah. there for 20 years. And uh, I don't think they've really thought this through so much as you got a whole bunch of people talking about. What, uh, give us an example Auburn. of a buyer profile that would buy that and be like, this is a great idea. I think, you know, you got all these people now. Well, maybe you don't know, but there's a lot of people now that are talking about homesteads and creating like communities that are off the Thunder grid back. and and they're getting more and more and more. Right. So mm -hmm. um, I would imagine that, you know, for 10 bucks for land that a guy that would consider a homestead might say, you know what, for 10 bucks, like I'll go build my own house it's on this with my happen. own hands. Right. And, you know, a couple hundred grand later, I got a house and uh I don't know if you can work from home, right? And you're handy with your hands. This is a winning combination because if you can I'm sure work, winters are great in Cochrane, Ontario. I can't even imagine, right? Yeah, I can't even imagine. But like, this is what it's coming to is that I we're getting like this is all even what we were talking about just a second ago is people sharing their houses or renting their houses or splitting their houses up more and more offering free land to people as incentive to come. This is great depressionary style behavior, right? This mm. is right. So it's weird because it's like the economy is going, but there's a lot of stuff behaving. Why do you like say the economy is depression. going? You said that a few times. What, what tells you, don't you that feel the economy like is going? I don't know. Like you still go out and people are spending money on stupid there's shit. There's people and, at the places that you go to. Well, there's also more people, though. There's more people. There's more this people. is exactly it. So it doesn't okay. matter. Okay, it's a number. So per capita, game. how's the economy doing? Doesn't matter. Nobody gives a fuck about per capita. Who cares about per capita? No, but no other country is going. Oh wow, their per capita is going down. It's overall. It just it sucks what for the mean? people. Anytime we look at China's per capita, everyone always goes, "Well, yeah, sure, their GDP is really high, but look at their per capita." Right, because they so want to make it, it look matter. like they're. Who's yeah. saying it though? Like a bunch of idiots. Know. Yeah, the people out there who are like, well, it's great that you know your your country's growing and that your GDP is growing, yeah. but your individual uh, citizen, how are they doing? And it's right. getting worse. Yeah, nobody gives a shit. Don't you see that? Nobody gives a shit about the individual citizens. If they did, the world wouldn't look like this. Mm. They don't care. They care about money, and that's why the world looks like this, right? So. Uh, if we're, if we're looking around and yes, if we still have the same amount of goods, but there's double the people, right? They're all still buying stuff in the economy. So if you own a store, you're still selling shit depending on the store. Okay. Maybe it's not as great as it was before the pandemic or at certain points in the last couple of years, but it's not dying. It's not sputtering. People are looking for employees. That's a really good sign. Not only are they looking for employees, they're paying them a lot more money. We see salary inflation is like part of the story right now, right? People mm -hmm. getting big, big raises to stay put, or they have two jobs and one employer doesn't know about the other. The, the point is, is like, it doesn't look like a stalled, fucked up economy, right? And people aren't panicking. You have a few people here and there that are losing their stuff, right? So it's like you got this cleansing happening, but the market's not really getting to cleanse. Just people are getting cleansed out of it. And for the most part, it has nothing to do with anything that they did, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't do anything. What did they do? Buy a house in 2021? That's what they did. They bought a house and they listened to that motherfucker say that rates are going to stay low while making their decision to buy the house and take the mortgage, right? This is all that happened. It's a big fucking game for these motherfuckers, right? So they just, they're playing with everybody. If we really cared about the people and the economy and we wanted things to work, we'd have a house for everybody. We'd have a job for everybody. Right. If you can just print money at will and nobody cares, nobody's the wiser than like, what the fuck? It would they, every city in the whole country has tense cities now. That wasn't a thing ever. Right. Like this place is going to hell in a handbag. Right. Meanwhile, the prices are like not really going down. I think last month the prices went up a little bit, didn't they? And if they're going down, like they, they're just like they're dancing right now. They're dancing. Gas prices are good. Gas prices are good, are they? I, I like. I don't even know what the point of looking at gas prices anymore. It's like a two dollar difference on a tank, whichever way it goes. Like if you're hurting so much that you're really watching those gas prices, 
either you're driving too fucking far to work every day or like you're really in trouble. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. what I said. Like when I was sitting there at my worst in my worst fucking financial state ever, I'd stand there with the pump, just looking at it, <laughs> freaking out. Right. Just freaking out. Oh, when is it going to stop? When will this when thing stop? stop? With the F-150. No, right? the lowest, the lowest gas tank, the lowest tank of gas that I ever filled up on my car is um 80. 80 and then bucks? the highest was like 110. Right, so it's thirty yeah. bucks a difference. Like that's what it is. So thirty bucks a tank from the low to the high. Is like, it in the last couple of years? Thirty dollar difference. Yeah. Really? You're right. It's not that big of a deal. Each like, tank, that's a big yeah. deal. That's a big well, deal for people. Sure. I mean, it's not a big deal, but I yeah, mean, yeah, look, yeah. you do it three th once a week. That's a hundred and what? What is it? One uh, one through one twenty? Fifteen hundred yeah. a year. Fifteen hundred bucks a, a month. 1500 a 150 bucks a month right but for sure. some people that's 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 something that's part of a big part of groceries yeah, right yeah, that's yeah. like yeah. beer cigarettes a bunch of weed like that's a lot of stuff for people so what's the solution draw i keep telling you just listen to me and uh, everything will get solved non-stop three percent interest rates fixed for everybody okay yeah. and ai government Perfect. Done. Perfect. Done. It's over. But we won't do that. We're going to do this for like God knows how much longer until it disintegrates. I think Just let the robots run us. Just let the robots run us and uh, make it a free market. Boom. Boom. Daryl Town. Daryl Town Darryl for everyone. Daryl Topia. I want to be the mayor of Daryl Topia. I'm pretty sure you are already the mayor I'm the, of Geraltopia. I'm, and I'm its only resident, and I will yeah. remain this way for eternity. TK, if we didn't go a, off the, ro the rails before. It's been before, a blast. Today was just insane. We're off insane. the rails If you now. listen to this and you're still listening right now, uh, just please come There's back next something week. something wrong I promise with it. next yeah, week will be sorry. better. <laughs> it's the shirt. Yeah. It's the shirt. TK, are we recording this thing?